WKYC reporter Obi Shelton did a great series of reports looking at the blues in Cleveland, Ohio. These aired uh, November 7th and 14th, 1993. And in, in these reports, Shelton shows live clips and interviews with blues giants who had played Cleveland and, and, he, and he checked them out. Various clubs from Fat Fish Blues, Wilberts, there's Blossom footage all over the place. Great job, Obi. And, and uh, you'll, you'll see Robert Jr. Lockwood, Buddy Guy, Junior Wells, Coco Taylor, Lonnie Brooks, um, interviews with Mike Miller from Wilberts and a look at the other clubs that were hosting blues shows at the time, Fat Fish Blue, obviously, um, Touch of Italy and Shaker Heights, Mr. Z's, and uh, Obi pointed out that there were television commercials using blues and, and uh, went back and said that the Blues Brothers movie starring John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd was the biggest thing to get the blues expanded out of being predominantly a, a black genre to what Obi identified then as suburban, uh, the suburban crowd. And uh, he also showed how uh, Teller Records, famous for doing classical music, super high fidelity, direct to disc, I mean, pioneers in the audio edge of putting out records and CDs, how they were going to be releasing their first blues CD with Junior Wells. Obi Shelton should be discussed here too because I, I, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, I liked him. He was cool. He wore his bow tie all the time. Um, and he, he was obviously into music and, and so much so that he's a recording artist himself now. He goes under the name of Obed uh, Shelton and you can find his channel on YouTube. I'm going to put the links and stuff in, in up uh, on this video, but cool guy. And uh, he stopped broad being a news broadcaster in 2008 and followed a different path. You can go on his website and read about that. I'll have those links as well. So, again, these are from the WKYC 11 o'clock news on November 7th and 14th, 1993, the Blues in Cleveland. If you think you have the blues, this may be just the city to have it in. Besides being the home of rock and roll, Cleveland music has plenty of soulful sounds. In a Channel 3 News special report, Obi Shelton and photographer Dave Hollis show us how blue Cleveland is getting. When you think of the blues, what comes to mind? The old stereotype blues scene was a backwood shack or an old smoky after hours bar where bootleg liquor and a rowdy fight blended right in with the raunchy lyrics. Look at how and where the music is played today, at Blossom. And at chic blues bars that are springing up all over town, about a half dozen have begun booking blues bands full or part-time just in the last two years. And look who's listening to the blues. The new clubs bring clean-cut, middle-income suburbanites out to enjoy what church people used to call the devil's music.
to build this image as the rock and roll capital. But tell that to a veteran blues artist and they'll probably laugh or cuss. Then they'll tell you how the roots of rock and roll aren't in Cleveland, they're in the blues. Rock and roll ain't nothing but the blues play face. That's all. You could take uh, uh, the 78 record, which was a, a rock and roll record by Little Richard, and turn it down to a 45 speed and you heard Little Richard singing the blues. You take a blues record and, and put it on high speed and you got rock and roll. They just speed up, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's all it is. But you know, the, you kind of by being fast, you miss the soul. Of course, Cleveland's claim to rock and roll is that disc jockey Alan Freed coined the term here. But much of the music he played was called blues before he gave it the new label. For instance, Joe Turner recorded Shake, Rattle and Roll, and it was called blues. Haley did the same song, and it was called Rock and Roll. The irony now is that people who grew up listening to rock and roll are discovering the old blues songs, and it's like a new music to them. Next Saturday in part two of his special report, Obi will look at why the blues has made it mainstream. When I was living down south, I used to go to New Orleans every once in a while, and there's a lot of blues down oh, there. And awesome. I've hit a couple of the clubs up here, and same thing. The blues yeah. never changes. It's, it's good that it's here. We owe these folks a debt, those of us who grew up on rock and roll. And I think one of the reasons it's so popular is because when rock and roll is good, it is honest, mm -hmm. and the blues Very honest. honest. Mm -hmm. Years. It used to be a musical staple down south, especially along the bayous of Louisiana. But today's blues has found a new crowd. In their second part of the series, Channel 3's Obi Shelton and photographer Dave Hollis found the blues making a strong showing in some surprising places. <laughs> It's taken generations, but the deceptive simplicity of the blues has moved this once obscure folk music into the mainstream. It's safe now, even trendy, to use the blues to get a mass audience to buy something. Whenever you see they're doing commercials and have blues music in it, it means it's moving to the surface a little bit. They be using blues now behind commercials. I never thought I'd ever see that. Now I'm a man. Way past 21. So how did this music, with all its rough edges, slip into such broad acceptance? Boom, 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 boom. One big advance came with the hit movie The Blues Brothers about 12 years ago with John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. Come on, oh, baby, don't you want to go? They really got behind it and it was like, you know, they just proved to people that it was a lot of fun. And they were really upbeat and they were dancing all the time. And I think that really helped it. Mike Miller owns the blues club Wilberts in the Flats and is president of Ohio's nonprofit blues organization. Dan Aykroyd just wasn't a lead actor in the movie. He was and still is an avid supporter of the blues. The Harvard Endowment has given $10 million to help him and others build a chain of blues clubs throughout the nation. In Cleveland, live blues has been popping up in some surprising locations and helping to boost business. Here on Chagrin and Lee, a Touch of Italy restaurant features all Italian cuisine and weekend blues. On West 117th and Lorraine, the upscale Mr. Z's restaurant began booking blues bands over the summer, and business improved 25%. Grammy winner Buddy Guy remembers Cleveland firemen stopping his act a few years ago at the old Empire Club downtown. People were packed in past the legal limit, and Buddy Guy realized then that he and the blues had made a breakthrough. Father Palmer came to me and told me the fact that they thought I was too big to play at a place like that. And, and it's just like, am I? You know, because I didn't ever think I would uh, get to the point where they would, I would be told that. Tellark, the Cleveland company with an international reputation for classical recordings, put out its first blues album this year because of demand. 
the artist Junior Wells. I wish I'd have known you like I know right now. Then I wouldn't have to work or not. I wouldn't have to sing these blues. <laughs> Next week, Obie looks at friction that has developed as the blues continues to attract a new audience.